Hi, this is Regaline Sabah, also known as Gigi. You're listening to Walk With Me Podcast. My guest today is Nadine Joy. Nadine is the CEO of Nadine Joy Consulting, Inc., the chair and founder of the Global Lead to Impact Summit and the co-founder of Working Wellness, a Caribbean-themed corporate wellness training program. Nadine has been featured in top media outlets, including USA Today, CBC, iHeartRadio, and NYC, Fox, The Globe, and Mail, and NBC. Welcome to the show, Nadine. Thank you so much. You're welcome. It's an honor to have you here today. Now, why don't you start off by telling us about you and where you are from? Yeah, for sure. So um, again, my name is Nadine Joy and I am in Canada. I'm in a, a city called Regina, Saskatchewan of just 250,000 people. So a small center here in the center of Canada that most people have no idea where it is. So <laughs> I'm so glad to be here today. I love it. Such an honor to have you here today. Now tell us more about your company, Nadine Joy Consulting, Inc. Yeah, so Nadine Joy Consulting is a global consulting firm where we work with clients all over the world, helping them get unstuck, helping them tap into their on tap potential that they have within them and also helping them uh, to live their dreams, live the life of their dreams and also achieve their goals in life. And uh, lots of times people have aspirations, they have dreams, uh, they get to a certain point in their life where they feel stuck, they don't really know where to go from there, they might not enjoy their job anymore, you know, they might, you know, be in a career where they're no longer feeling fulfilled. And what I do is help people get on stuck by working through the issues working through things from our past that hold us back. And as leaders, many times we have things that we're not aware of, that hold us back from really stepping into all of the all of the, the leader and all of the, the person that uh, God wants us to be in, in life here on earth. I love it. Now, what, what inspired you to become a speaker? <laughs> so that's a very good question. I actually was a very, very shy child growing up. So I never actually really dreamed of becoming a speaker. That was probably the thing on the very bottom of my list. I, again, I was that child that I, when I was called upon, even in class, I would sit there with a blank look on my face and not even answer the teacher because I was terrified of saying the wrong thing. So I, I didn't really know I wanted to be a speaker until I got really sick after working as a geologist in corporate for over a decade. And where I saw the realization of that, it's not about me. It's not about being in the spotlight. It's about the message that I can share through my voice and through the power of my voice to other people and the people that I can help. It wasn't about me, it's about everybody else in the world and how my message, how my story might be able to resonate with somebody that might be feeling alone going through the exact same thing or similar situations. Absolutely amazing. Now tell us more about your book, Uncover Your Purpose, Heal and Share Your Gifts with the World. Yeah, so I wrote a book. Um, actually, I actually have it here. So this is uh, my book called Uncover Your Purpose. And I wrote this book um, a few years ago now. And again, that was another story where I just woke up one morning, I heard I was supposed to write a book. And again, I wasn't a writer, never dreamed of writing a book. But I just heard over and over again, you need to write a book. And the funny story happened, I went on Facebook. And the first thing that I saw was somebody saying, we can help you write a book. I never written a book before. This is my very first book that I wrote. And I thought, well, this is this is too much of a coincidence, I have to reach out. And again, it kind of as a joke, I, re I reached out saying, okay, I'm you know, I, I just heard I'm supposed to write this book. I don't know what my topic is supposed to be. Um, but can you help me because I've never done this before and looking for guidance. And I heard back from them. Surprisingly, I heard back from them the next day saying, well, you know, I'd love to help you with uh, with your book and write your book. And I basically will talk to people around the world the next two weeks, 50, 50 people at least said, you know, I'm stuck. Can you help me? Can you help me? Can you help me? I want to find my purpose. And it's all about finding your purpose strategies to help you find your purpose in life. Um, what are those things like all the way from, you know, what did you used to do as a child uh, that used to bring you joy that maybe as an adult you've forgotten about all the way to, you know, letting go of things in our life that no longer serves us to make room for the things that are meant to be in our life. Amen. Finding your purpose truly matters. Now tell us more about your other book. Love is a guide to the power of love. Yeah, so this book is that book's quite different than my than my first book. It's all about the power of love, the power of God's love, and how it transforms our lives. 
It, I, I went through, there's 33 chapters in the book about all things to do with love, all of the difficult things, the things that a lot of people don't want to talk about or have difficulty talking about. These are the things that I was guided to write about in this book. It's 100% um, guided. Uh, and it talks about things like all the way from there's chapters that we wrote about the power of love with plants that me and my four children planted and prayed love over each plant every day and said hate to the other one and an amazing transformation that happened. So the, if that can do that to a plant, what can it do to us as society, as children, our children, our, our clients, our people we work with, our friends, our cities, our nations and our world together. So it's just about the power of love and how it can change us in every possible way about the things maybe we didn't grow up with love. How do we learn to love if we've never had that love? Um, questions like that, that it answers. Anything you've ever wondered about is basically in that book. It took me two and a half years to write and lots of uh, all night all nighters where I get woken up by the spirit to to write and, and be divinely guided by that and it's a book that I saw is quite unique also in the fact where I heard it's one of those books where you can hold and literally pray over and be transformed by the power of love without even reading the book so it has a unique uh, characteristic that way and my son also drew I don't have it with me but my son also drew the green heart on the front of the book which makes it very meaningful and even more filled with love because um, he had put his heart and soul into drawing the picture that ended up being on the cover. Very beautiful. Now tell us more about the major challenge in your life when you got sick and the doctors couldn't figure out what was wrong. Yeah. So I, I, if you would have asked me if this is what I would have been doing with my life, there's no way I would have ever thought that I would have ended up as a coach, as a speaker, as a trainer. Uh, I, I thought I was going to be a geologist the rest of my life. And I was one of those people who was a workaholic. I worked 24-7, uh, I was on call all the time, worked my way up the corporate ladder, um, got everything I basically could ever dream of by the time I was 25 years old. But the one thing that was missing was I felt a void. I didn't understand what it was, but there was a massive void inside of me that I just felt something was missing. And I kept pushing myself. I didn't listen to that voice. I didn't listen to the, the physical symptoms I was experiencing until one day when I was 28 years old, I woke up and I had the most excruciating pain in my side. I couldn't, we barely even move, let alone go to work. And this is when I retired my career as a geologist. And I basically had to start over from scratch, learning, first of all, how to get better when the doctors couldn't help me. Um, and going to specialists, working with a whole bunch of, of different uh, people out there who claim to be able to help. And lots of them I found through this process, you know, they were able to help temporarily, but there wasn't a lot out there that really helped me on a deep level that really got to the root of the cause of what was actually going on and what was actually making me sick. And it was a year and a half journey of working with these specialists to get better and figuring out, you know, what was going on, you know, realizing that I'd lived from the time I was four years old where God showed me uh, my gifts, showed me who I was. I was always somebody who was different and felt very different. And I recognized when I got sick that I basically repressed every part of who I was, all of the gifts I had been given uh, up until this point where I had been 28 years old when I got sick based on all my external worth. Everything that I did in my life was based on the words that I won, the title that I was given, the you know, working my way up the corporate ladder versus on the inside out, which is who I was, what my gifts were and honoring all of that part of me. And I recognized that once I recognized that um, I had an epiphany and I said, you know, I was laying on my bathroom floor and I just, I had this vision of, you know what, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. I have nothing left to give. I literally had given up and I had a voice inside of my head. I know it was God speaking to me saying, you know what, you can do this. You're going to do this. You know, you're going to get your big girl pants on and you're going to figure this out. And you're also going to help a lot of other people do the same. And it wasn't through, it was through that, you know, healing negative beliefs and, and patterning and all these things that had happened, traumas, things from my childhood that I had never dealt with that it really opened up the doors to end my, also my relationship with God. I ended up coming back to spend time with God on a regular basis where I had forgotten about this when I was so busy working that I was just busy, distracted, constantly doing, doing, doing versus just being. And once I got back to that, um, literally the long story short, God healed me. And that was 15 years ago now. And I haven't had any symptoms whatsoever since then. They're hardly even a cold, to be honest with you. So I praise the Lord for the miracles that he's worked in my life and worked in so many other people's lives all around the world. Amen. Now you mentioned God quite often. How important is your relationship with God to you? 
God is literally my everything. I everything I do, everything I I move towards, everything in my life that I I have, it goes towards the glory of God because I know without him I wouldn't have anything. I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for time that I'd taken. I have a morning routine that I do every morning in prayer and meditation and the revelations and the clarity and the guidance that God has had given me in those times when I've spent in silence with him have given me so much clarity as the things that I need to move towards and also things that I needed to let go of. So I wouldn't be here a hundred percent without God. The God is my everything and I owe everything that I have to him. Amen. I love it. Now, Nadine, what is your why that keeps you going? What is the which story? <laughs> what is your why that keeps you going? Oh, my my why is simply just the ability to be able to help people and help people transform their lives and give them hope and spread love and bring joy into their life in some way, shape or form and seeing somebody who comes to me who's stuck and really has no hope there, you know, have so much hopelessness in their life and being able to speak with them and allow them to see the light again and see the light at the end of the tunnel. And whether that's through me sharing my story or them just, you know, talking to me about their experience and me listening to them and being that listening ear, it's the transformation of the people, of the clients, of the leaders, of the businesses um, and seeing the gaps that are there and being able to communicate that effectively to the people that I'm working with that really help them get past that and go to a place they've never been before that nobody else has really brought them to. Fantastic. Now, tell us more about a time where you experience an aha moment in your life. An aha moment in my life. Oh my goodness. You have had so, I've literally had thousands of aha moments. So I'm trying to think of one that stands out to share. Um, I can I can probably like even just with my book, for example, right, writing my book and not knowing that I was a writer and just having the aha moment once I started writing my book where literally God would wake me up every night because my my doubts creeped in where I said, I'm not a writer. I'm not I'm not, I'm not I don't know how to write a book. I have four kids. I, I'm not gonna have time to write a book. All these doubts, all these lies that the enemy puts in our head that makes us second guess things. So that was my first epiphany really that showed me, you know, the power of like with God, anything is possible. Like doesn't matter what it is. If you believe, if you move towards that, if you take action towards the guidance you are given, Things and miracles happen in your life that are beyond your wildest dreams that are filled with literally infinite possibilities. Uh, I can share a story about how I got featured in USA Today just very briefly. I went to a media conference in New York City and had met the editor for uh, USA Today and they gave me the copy of the magazine I took home. He said, contact me. We'd love to feature your story in our magazine about purpose. Um, I went home, kept the magazine that, that night when I got back to my hotel room, I sent a message to him on email and literally I never heard anything. And then there's, there's months that went by and I, I'm the type of person I, I, I pray, I let go of things. Uh, I believe that everything happens for a reason. We meet the people we're supposed to, the opportunities that come to us also are for a reason. I never heard back from, so I, you know, I said, that's okay either way. I, everything in my life, I have no attachments to whatsoever. That was one of them. I had no attachments to it. And I said, you know what, that's fine. I'll, I'm letting it go. I, I literally, that was a year and a half ago, and one day I was cleaning up my kitchen and happened to come across this USA Today magazine. And my, my husband had said to me, oh, why don't you just throw that out? You should just throw that in the garbage. It's been sitting around here for an hour or for a year and a half. And I said to him, I said, no, I said, one day my article is going to be featured in that and I'm not throwing it out. And the next day, and I can't even tell you, then literally the next day I get an email from the editor in chief of USA Today saying, oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened and how your email got misplaced that you had sent me, but we'd love to feature your article in USA Today. So I just say to people that if you're wanting to move towards something, if you have dreams towards something that you really believe in and even things that you don't, just trust that everything that is meant to be will happen for a reason exactly when it's meant to be and not a moment sooner. Amen. Listen to him and trust him. Very powerful. Now, what is your best advice to the audience for walking with purpose and living a life of happiness? I would say believe in yourself and trust in yourself and trust your journey, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're going through, no matter what difficulties you're facing right now. Uh, looking at it as, you know, there's no good or bad, right or wrong. There's nobody that's better than anybody else. We're all one. We're all connected through God's love. 
And I would say, you know, trust yourself in that journey, trust yourself in who you are and believe in, in the capabilities. Look at, think of your, your greatest role model in society right now and think of the qualities that they possess. And then I want you to go and I want you to look in the mirror and I want you to see that person looking back in the mirror has all of those qualities that you look at in your greatest role model out there today. And that if anything is possible, all of those qualities, they might be laying dormant, they might not be activated yet, but I can tell you from my own experience and my own journey of putting certain people on pedestals when I was when I was learning about leadership and and getting out there as a coach and things like that um, I, I never recognized those and I didn't believe in myself fully I thought I did but I never did um, on on the deepest level and let go of control also would be another uh, word of advice completely not just in certain parts of your life but let go of control in every single part of your life and surrender all to again the journey and where you're meant to be is exactly where you're supposed to be. Absolutely inspiring. Thank you for sharing that with us, Nadine. And thank you for being a guest on Walk With Me podcast. Now, where can the audience find you? Uh, so I am on LinkedIn and I also, my website is nadinejoy.com, just N-A-D-E-N-E-J-O-Y.com. Or you can also send me an email at nadine at nadinejoy.com. I love it. Ladies and gentlemen, make sure to check out Nadine at NadineJoy.com. And Nadine, again, thank you for being a guest on Walk With Me podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome.